I've been a professional drummer for very many, many years, so many I don't even want to say. And one of the great joys of it is being able to ratchet a band up and down. When you see great, great musicians behind the drums, they are like a transmission for these bands. A great, great drummer knows how to lead the band in these gear shifting transitions. So often in programming, again, when people go to do fills, they kind of do like what they think is a fill, not what a fill really should sound like, but what they think it should sound like. Consider this. Okay, now uh, the kid down the street might play that way, and there are some punk songs, and there are some kind of naive styles that have that, that type of drumming in them, and if the song calls for straight time fills like this right down the toms, that's what you have to do. But as a general principle for the way drummers play, good drummers play, they can take these same patterns and they they just change up the surfaces a little bit. So this is a slightly hipper fill that I'm going to start out with as a, as a foundation. I could take this blue one, and then I'm going to take this same rhythmic pattern and build it green, pink, orange, yellow. Take a listen. Okay, so that is jerky and, to my ear, completely amateur sounding and doesn't really make you want to move to the next part of the song. It kind of jerks you back a little bit. It doesn't give me a sense of forward into the song. It actually pulls back. So I picked this pattern as an example so that I can just show you that I take the same rhythmic elements, if you'll watch from blue to green, they're the same elements just spread about on different surfaces. Now to my ear, that has a lot more forward motion to it than the prior example. Let's uh, let's take it one step further from pink, green to pink. And in green, I have some stuff still muted. In blue, I had a lot of stuff muted. Green, less so. And in pink, I take, I just taking parts of that original beat, unmuting them and moving them up and down the surfaces. Okay, it's a slight bit busy right through here, but um, one thing here is that a, a good drummers a lot of times stay off of one. They don't just keep banging one. They often uh, do crashes on the E or the uh, four E and uh kind of stuff. So here's an example of that. Let's listen. Okay, so that's an example of taking the same rhythmic figure and moving it up and down. Let's move it one iteration further. Okay, that gets not like realism is the ultimate goal. I don't care about realism. Um, if you want realism, get a real drummer. But this, in terms of a programming lesson sounds more like somebody would play, okay? And then from orange to yellow is just a simple offset, okay? We'll go over this a little bit in the future, but I just take the yellow and I offset it by one eighth note, just like this, boom, boom. And it sounds a lot better. my ear that's more of a punctuation you know like boom 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 this is the new part of the song go you know instead of the other one so I'm gonna do orange once more and then we'll go to yellow without stopping Moving stuff around the different surfaces. Song form. 
A good drummer is going to empty out when the lyric is being played. The first verse and the and the lyricist, the singer, is trying to get the feeling of the song across. We take that very same beat and just mute a few things and move some of the elements to lighter surfaces, little tinier notes. Still pretty busy, but it could support a lyric. And to my ear, I would empty out even further, you know, taking stuff like this out. Or moving that down to a little ghost note, like a little snare kind of a thing. And then taking the velocities all the way down. Okay. Move to the second part of the song, which would be this, you know, the first chorus. More hi-hat, more forceful snare. And look at it over here. Just more forceful and, and bigger. And then second verse would be something, you know. It's like the first, but there's there's these open hats at the end. And then going into the big part of the song would be something like Okay, not a big fan of that sound. Just might move it up and you know, find some some other sound, but this is what I do. I move stuff to different surfaces and move it around. I change some of the accents. Okay, so there we have it. We have the ability of a good drummer to shift gears with the band using fills that are spread around the different surfaces in an intelligent way, musical way. And then the ability to, to ratchet the band up and down. So all of this, whether you're doing abstract electronic music or trying to, you know, program some realistic drums in the absence of a good player in your region or something like that. All of this um, adds to your bag of tricks in terms of being a good programmer. Next up, we're going to look at some video of some great, great drummers.